Uh, but let's move on now to the browser tab that America refuses to close, Donald Trump. He won the Oregon primary <laughs> last night, but that wasn't the only contest that people were paying attention to. Trump, Kelly, the interview we've waited for. Donald Trump's long-awaited interview with Megyn Kelly. Fox News anchor sitting down with Donald Trump. It's a blockbuster, hotly anticipated face-to-face -face interview with the billionaire candidate himself. Whatever your plans are for this evening, you should probably cancel them. That's right. <laughs> Even if you're driving your pregnant wife to the hospital, <laughs> cancel that <laughs> She's like, unless you're giving birth to an HD TV, we're watching that interview. <laughs> cancel your plans? What a strong... What if my plan was to watch the interview? Then what do I do now, Shep Smith? <laughs> what do I do now? What do I do now? Seriously, the hype for this event was out of control. You know, it, it was like if Apple revealed the new iPhone in the middle of a new Beyonce song, in the middle of the new Star Wars sequel. It was, <laughs> it was so hyped up. And until last night, Trump had been boycotting Kelly's show, despite it being the second highest rated cable news show, and he had good reasons. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account has several disparaging comments about women's looks. You once told a contestant on Celebrity Apprentice it would be a pretty picture to see her on her knees. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? Yeah, wow. That doesn't even sound like the temperament of a man we should elect as assistant manager at Chili's. <laughs> he looks pretty good in that outfit, you gotta admit. You gotta admit. And that debate, that debate was just a jumping off point for a feud that's been going on for months now. I don't have a lot of respect for Megyn Kelly. She's not very tough and she's not very sharp. She's Zippo. Now, I certainly will not apologize for doing good journalism. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. We, the press, are the counterpunchers. We, we are paid to hold the presidential candidates to account. Megyn Kelly is a lightweight. We're really the only thing that stands between them and the Oval Office, so we have to ask tough questions. Wow, this isn't Trump Kelly, this is Mayweather, Mayweather Pacquiao, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, except for the fact that there's no way they make boxing gloves small enough for Donald Trump's tiny hands. <laughs> that would be the only thing. <laughs> Poke you in the eye. Ow, ow, my eye, my eye. So the world was ready. The world was ready for Megyn Kelly to face the beast with her hard-hitting hard journalism and unrelenting pursuits of accountability. And last night, on primetime network TV, the fight was on. Let's begin. Thank you for sitting down with me. There had to be a moment on stage at a campaign rally or one night after a win where it occurred to you, I could actually be the president. When was that? Were you ever bullied? Has anyone ever hurt you emotionally? I want to talk for a minute about the tweeting. Okay. Set the scene for me. Do you pick up your iPhone and yes. actually tweet yourself? And usually after 7 or 8 o'clock, I'll do it myself. What? <laughs> what is this? What the hell was it? Like, this was sold as a bloodbath, but in the end, it just turned out to be one of those couples baths that only exist in, like, the Cialis commercials. <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> what are those questions? But, but, okay, but you, but you know what, but you know what? I'm sure Megyn Kelly knows what she's doing. You see, unlike Cialis, she's softening Trump up. <laughs> and then, and then just when he drops his guard, boom! The comment about John McCain, you prefer people who weren't captured. Um, the comment about Carly Fiorina's face. But do you regret any of those comments? Uh, yeah, I guess so, but you have to go forward. You make a mistake, you go forward, and you, you know, you can correct the mistake, but... To look back and say, gee whiz, I wish I didn't do this or that, I don't think that's good. I don't even think, in a certain way, I don't even think that's healthy. I want to talk a little bit about your family. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, wait, what just happened there? The guy who wants to control the most powerful military in the world just said he doesn't think it's healthy to reflect on mistakes. <laughs> and there's no follow-up question? <laughs> you just move on? That, that's like if the, the producers of The Jinx heard Robert Durst say, I killed them all. And they were just like, great. So, uh, what was it like growing up in Scarsdale? <laughs> That's not the question. <laughs> you know, lo last night's interview didn't seem to be about journalism or the Republican Party or even the election. It seemed like it was about two brands, Donald Trump and Meghan Kelly, and whether they could forge a mutually beneficial partnership. You know, just like Chipotle teams up with bacteria to help you lose weight. <laughs> or, or maybe, or maybe it was just couples therapy. And this moment especially summed up the entire interview. When you and I were having our little difficulty, 
Um, you probably had some pretty nasty tweets sent your way. Well, you retweet some of those. Not just the fans. Yeah, but not the more nasty ones. You would be amazed at the ones I don't retweet. Bimbo? Uh, well, there was a retweet. Yeah, did I say that? Many times. Ooh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that? Excuse me? That's, that's all your answers? Excuse me? We're talking about misogyny, not a fart. Excuse me? <laughs> and Megyn Kelly, I don't get it. You've spent months lambasting Trump for his sexist comments, and now you're just laughing it off. I, I can't believe this, but Megyn Kelly just got negged by Donald Trump. He repeatedly insulted her, and then all of a sudden switched it up with a little charm, and just like that, she's all smiles. And you know what, I don't blame Meghan Kelly for that. That's just the power of Trump. In fact, that technique even worked on our own Desi Lydic when she interviewed Trump. Mr. Trump, I'm just gonna come out and say it. You're bad for women. You objectify us, you call us fat pigs. On Twitter, you blamed Hillary Clinton for her husband's infidelity. Uh, well, there was a retweet, yeah, did I say that? Yes, you even said people shouldn't vote for Carly Fiorina because her face is ugly. Ooh. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> He's so damn charming! <laughs> so charming! That's why we sent Roy Wood Jr. to set Trump straight. Look, Trump, enough of your sh running around talking about the blacks, people getting punched at your rallies, and on Twitter, you're out here supporting the goddamn KKK. Uh, well, if there was a retweet, yeah, did I say that? Yeah, yeah, you said that, man. Who else am I talking about? You think I'm talking about the cameraman over here? You just run your mouth, run your mouth. You better apologize. Ooh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, dang, he's still my boy, man. All day like OJ. Give me some that. He got Roy, too. He got Roy, too. So we sent in Ronnie Chang. Hey, man, why do you keep talking all this about immigrants? I want to you so hard right now. You know what, you know what, I get it. I get it. I know that Trump may be a torture supporting a Muslim disparaging horseman of the apocalypse, but don't forget, when he's president and it's all going to <laughs> we'll all get to look at that smile.